channel on YouTube, I, Andrew Miller and Shane Black from HookemHeadlines.com. Uh, we are coming back at y'all today with some March Madness content. Um, it is Big 12 tournament time this week. Uh, starting tomorrow, because we're recording on the night of uh, March 7th, we will have the first round of the Big 12 tournament. Um, the uh, bottom four seeds will uh, duke it out to see who moves on to the quarterfinals. Um, we're going to give some of our takes on the Big 12 tournament, um, you know, specifically how Texas's path stacks up to be able to win uh, the Big 12 tournament crown. And uh, then we will go in and go through our bracket for the Big 12 tournament. Um, we will uh, show you all as we go along with that for this show. Um, it's kind of a mouthful, but anyway, um, you know, Texas heads into the Big 12 tournament as a two seed. Um, they finally have some of them. I say finally, it's not like they were heading into last weekend on a long losing streak. But, you know, Texas got a much needed win last weekend. Um, big win against number three, Kansas. So got something to feel good about. And, um, you know, I, I like where Texas sits heading in, uh, you know, heading into the run in Kansas City this week. What are you thinking for it? Yeah, I mean, Big 12 has been the best conference in college basketball all season long. So, um, it's going to be a whirlwind of the four days, but it's going to be really exciting for Big 12 fans to sit back and watch all these teams duke it out. Kansas City is always a great host, and yeah, I have high expectations for Texas specifically. And I think it'll be interesting to see how much, uh, or if any, seed line movement can happen, depending what Texas does. There are, every game you play here is pretty much going to be a quad one uh, game. So that's a chance to get a quad one win. That said, I don't think even with a conference tournament win, Texas will have the resume to sneak onto that one line. On the other hand, I don't even think with a quarterfinal loss, Texas would be dropped to a three line unless some other things kind of went went the wrong way in other conference tournaments. So um, I think specifically for this, Texas kind of locked into a two seed on the national level, and this team's just going to be focused on cutting down the nets in Kansas City um, more for, you know, like you said, momentum. Uh, and I think it's also important to note, I mentioned this in uh, a recent piece I did, but five seniors or super seniors who are not coming back, so they're trying to maximize as many more games of college basketball as possible. Uh, Arterio Morris, Dylan Mitchell still don't know what their status is. So that could be um, Tyrese Hunter as well, could be head of the NBA, still don't know. Um, so at least five, maybe seven or eight players on this team. Uh, this is kind of the final time they'll be suiting up in a college uniform over the next couple of weeks. So I think the motivation will be there for the Longhorns to come out and win some games. I think it's always a question, you know, some teams aren't motivated going into their conference tournament for whatever reason, whether they want to get healthy for the NCAA tournament. Um, but I think Texas will not have that problem, and we should see their best basketball for the next couple of days. Yeah, I mean – um, we'll, we'll talk about this here in a moment in terms of Texas's path um, to, to a potential Big 12 tournament crown. But, um, yeah, I mean, the experience that you mentioned on this team uh, should be something that proves to be very valuable. I mean, you got like a pretty interesting, like uh, a pretty interesting variety of experience, if you will, like diversity of background of experience also for like these different seniors and super seniors um i did a piece on the site uh, a few days ago talking about three reasons why texas can win the big 12 tournament i'm not going to reiterate each reason verbatim but one of the reasons i did mention had to do with the experience uh you know ken palm runs a experience rating factor um which just breaks down by age games played production things like that um, you know, which teams in the NCAA have the most experience. Texas was the sixth most, sixth most experienced team in the country and the most experienced in the Big 12. Um, the last time, ironically enough, that Texas was the most experienced team in the Big 12, as far as Ken Palm's rankings are concerned, uh, was in 2020 to 2021, which is the last time that Texas won the Big 12 tournament. So, um, you know, you got, you got a guy like Serge Barry Rice that's won a conference title or a conference tournament title at New Mexico State as recently. I, it's like, I believe that was last year, two years ago. Um, and Brock Cunningham won that 2021 Big 12 tournament title with, with the Longhorns. 
So um, you got a lot of guys that have been through a lot of different situations that you, know, you can see it in some of these guys like Rice, like Timmy Allen, like Christian Bishop, that just how badly they want to get some of these accolades like a Big 12 tournament title, like, you know, obviously a Final Four run. And so, um, you know, from the perspective of the experience and all the motivation for all of these seniors, super seniors as well, um, you, know, you gotta like where, where Texas is at in the locker room right now, you know, I'm ton like a ton of games in these sort of situations in March under all these guys belts so I'll digress on the point of experience but I, I you know you have to like that in these in these games yeah definitely I mean in March it comes down to experience guard play and you know both of those together and Texas has that so that should certainly help them uh, and I, I think for this team specifically, I think it's going to matter, um, them kind of gaining some momentum and putting themselves, you know, you know, feeling, you mentioned it at the top of the show, a little two-game skid before that Kansas win on Saturday. Could have got a little dicey if Texas was to drop that game and then maybe go out in the quarterfinals. I think this is a team that when they start to get it rolling, uh, they're really hard to beat, and they do feed off each other's momentum and confidence. You've seen that with Tyrese Hunter over the past couple weeks. So I think Kansas City can be kind of those building blocks to really figure out who you're going to be uh, in the NCAA tournament. And hopefully that just means that everyone's putting it together at the same time. Because especially on the offensive end, if Hunter, Carr, Rice, Timmy Allen, if these guys can all work together and cohesively play, even with all four on the court at the same time, that's a team that's going to be really hard to stop in March, just with the experience and the efficiency that they all score at. So I'm excited to see Texas play in Kansas City. And you know every game they get is going to be a tough matchup. So that, that's a good test, too. Yeah, no, you, you make a good point. Like, this is a – I mean, this is going to be an interesting – this is going to be an interesting spot for Texas just – playing away from home, you know, neutral sites or road games. With how much of a home court advantage Texas had this season, you would expect those to be much tougher challenges. They were. Um, you know, Texas lost one game, yeah, one game at home this season. Um, that puts them at seven losses you know, in three road games and neutral sites. So, um yeah, I mean, they're going to have to prove this to themselves. Obviously, this is something you have to prove to yourself before going off and playing in the big dance. So, um, looking at the actual Big 12 tournament field here, uh, you know, let's let's talk a little bit about that. What are some of the teams that, that scare you? What are some of the teams that, you know, think could make a run? Um, things like that. Yeah, so the interesting thing about this conference is we know the depth of it. So... I really think pretty much any team in the field, even including, you know, 10 seed Oklahoma and 9 seed Texas Tech, I could viably see them, you know, winning two games and making a semifinal and maybe even squeak it into a final. But I do believe that there are only four teams that can actually win the tournament. And that's number one seed, Bay- or number one seed Kansas, number two seed Texas, um, number four Baylor, and number six TCU. I think those are the four most dangerous teams in Kansas City and when it comes to March, the March Madness tournament as well. Uh, so I would be surprised if your winner didn't come from those four. You know, so I left off three seed Kansas State and five seed Iowa State. Um, I don't dislike those teams. I, I just I just have more trust in, in the uh, first four that I named. I think TCU is someone that, if I'm a Texas fan, I'm scared of in a potential semifinal matchup. We saw what happened in the last week of the week of the regular season. Texas was able to force 22 turnovers and still couldn't come up with the win. I know, Andrew, you tweeted out a couple just mind-blowing stats um, that were not in favor of the Longhorns. So I think with, with a, you know, a healthy Mike Miles, this is a team that's hungry. I think they've only lost three games this whole year with Mike Miles, 17-3. and three. So that's a team that would scare me in a potential semifinal matchup. And then, of course, you have the, I mean, the two top dogs 
of the past decade in the conference, Baylor and Kansas are sitting on the other side of the bracket. I think it's nice that Texas avoids them into an, an, until a possible championship round. But I mean, they're gonna you're gonna eventually have to beat the best if you want to cut down the nets. So yeah, I, I and I know we talked about this off air too. I'll, I'll leave it at this, but I wouldn't be surprised. This, in the slightest, if Texas went down in the quarterfinals, I don't expect that to happen. But just with the depth of this conference and there are no walkovers, it wouldn't surprise me. Which is, it puts you in a weird spot as a fan and someone covering the team uh, because you're kind of on pins and needles for the next four days. Yeah, I mean, th- this is the deepest conference in America for a reason. <laughs> um, it. <laughs> The the worst team in the Big 12, I think, in terms of the Ken Palm rating is Oklahoma, and I think they are barely outside of the top 50. <laughs> They're 51. Um, so that is uh, – Texas Tech is actually the bottom from what I can see here, and they're 53. Uh, let me just – that's – yeah, um, 80% of the conference is – sorry, 70%. Um, this is the only conference, I think, where if you're Texas, you can be the two seed in your first round game. More than like just looking at the Vegas betting line is likely going to be Oklahoma State. They've already swept OU this season, but both the Oklahoma schools um, are probably capable of beating up on each other. But if it is Oklahoma State, God knows you're playing in your first round a team that has six quad one wins already on the season. Um, so, I mean, again, this is the this is the sort of conference we play in, but this is what's going to make the entire tournament a lot of fun to watch, and it pretty much always is. Um, I mean, I think the good news if you're Texas is that, and you mentioned this, that you know Texas coming off a big win, you're getting the two seed, you're getting a pretty favorable path in the sense that you know the four teams you mentioned, and I'm actually going to go to a screen share here because I kind of want to show here to you guys a little bit of what I'm talking about. Um, you know, the four teams you actually mentioned that are scary in the Big 12 tournament for various reasons, Texas, Kansas, Baylor, and TCU, according to teamrankings.com, which is a pretty good source for analytics for uh, March Madness, these are the four teams that have double-digit percentage chances to win the Big 12 tournament. You know, Iowa State, Kansas State aren't trailing too far behind there, but, um, you know, TCU, even though they're a six seed, like you said, with Mike Miles in the mix, Damian Ball kind of clicking on all cylinders right now, um, they're a good team. And Baylor's really hit their stride the last month or so. Kansas obviously made a big run, winning, what was it, 10 of their final 12 down the stretch, something like that, 9 of 11, whatever that was. Um, yeah, so while you're Texas, you obviously got to feel good that, you know, they have us at better than a 25% chance to win. Um, I don't remember looking at this last time that was the case. So, uh, you know, I mentioned this again in my piece that I did, but Texas has a pretty favorable path. You know, looking at this from a Big 12 perspective, the only team that you really convinced, or, well, no, the two teams you convincingly swept during the regular season were West Virginia and Oklahoma State. And one of those is the likely first round opponent. Even after that, you're probably getting either, what was it, uh, TCU or, yeah, either TCU or Kansas State. Again, TCU can be scary, but of the, what would that be then, semifinal opponents that you could face, if TCU is the worst of the bunch, I'm okay with that. So, um, if I'm zooming out a little bit further here, you know, I, I have the teams up here that scare me, I, you know, or that have the best chance of winning you mentioned the four you know i i'm, I'm going to add one to the list here I'll, I'll say five that um could could be scary for the big 12 tournament i'll give credence to kansas state and iowa state if they won i wouldn't be surprised um but uh the one team i'm going to throw into the mix here is west virginia they've made some pre- or they've put together a pretty good run of late it seems like bob huggins has gotten that team you know playing together down the stretch. Um, they play pretty much everyone close except for Texas, which is nice. Um, but yeah, so those are, those are going to be the five, those four we talked about earlier, Texas, Kansas, Baylor, and TCU, and then West Virginia. 
Um, I, you know, those five will be the ones to watch for me. Um, okay, so uh, anything else that you wanted to mention about the Big 12 tournament in general or Texas's path before we get into our bracket? No, let's uh, let's run up the uh, let's run up the bracket machine. All right, so I'm going to go back into screen share mode here for y'all. Um, there are a couple things that I will show in addition to um, the Big 12 tournament predictions here, um, just to give some like overview to the tournament and what else is kind of on the line. Um, there's another page here I wanted to show from team rankings. It's just the bracketology. Um, you know, I, I like the way that they break down their rankings because they look a little bit more at like RPI, BPI, Ken Palm standings for team resumes than just looking at the eye test or quad one wins or whatever that be. Um, if you see here among the top eight seeds on the S curve, <laughs> Four of them are from the Big 12. They write the team rankings right now has three two seeds coming from the Big 12. So if that shows you how much is on the line here, including Texas still with, you know, still with some hope of getting a one seed. So um, keep that in mind. Uh, Texas, Kansas State, Baylor, and Kansas, there's still a ton to play for. Um, and then I found this interesting, you know, CBB analytics is uh, get, get pretty detailed on, on some of their situational metrics, but this right here shows big 12 team net rating stats on the season in neutral site games. Um, you know, one thing that'll probably catch your eye here is that Texas Tech has a plus 24.3 net rating in four neutral site games. Uh, if I need to remind anyone here, they beat Louisville by what was that 42 points? <laughs> I, I had honestly forgot about <laughs> that Texas Tech Louisville game earlier this season, um, 70 to 38. And then you also had them beating, what was that Jackson State, 102 to 52. So uh, th those, are, those are some outliers, but um, pretty impressive for West Virginia, Kansas State, and TCU. Mind you, OU, 4 and 1. So you got some pretty formidable teams here at neutral sites in the Big 12. So keep that in mind when thinking about the environment here in Kansas City, especially for the Kansas schools. You have a lot of fans there showing out. So just something to keep in mind. All right. So we can just kind of pick whatever scores we want to. I mean, I think the point is picking who's going to win these games. Um, Shane, you know, I, I personally had West Virginia, I mean, obviously from the teams I mentioned that are dangerous in the Big 12 tournament earlier in the video. Um, do, you, do you have a, are, are you picking Tech here? No, I'm going West Virginia. I, I thought it was interesting you mentioned them, and I completely agree with what you're saying. Uh, it seems like the last two or three weeks, they've been racking up wins, and even, you know, they lost to Kansas. I believe that was in fog by two. They had a chance to win the game at the end. Uh, Bob Huggins, um, one of the best coaches in the conference, he's going to have his team ready to go. I kind of almost don't, you know, let him slip my mind because even if they win, they're going to be playing Kansas. But I think they could give Kansas even a run. But no, West Virginia over Tech for me as well. Yeah. All right. We're just going to give it one nothing scores. No, other way around. Other way. You what? Uh, West Virginia, right? Yeah. Oh. Kansas Tech. <laughs> Off to a bad start here. Um, yeah, so uh, West Virginia moving on to play Kansas in the quarters. I, uh, who who do you have here? I, I I'm giving Oklahoma State a little bit of an edge here. But yeah, yeah. So I, it, it, so say. Uh, this is weird because I believe Oklahoma State's the better team, and I do think they're going to win this game. But in the back of my mind, I almost feel like Oklahoma State kind of needs this game, you know, for their resume. Um, and then, you know, a potential game against Texas would even boost their resume more. So I feel like Oklahoma could, as a rival, you know, yeah, screw not, them over with the win. Not. But I kind of lean Oklahoma State. But I think that just is a storyline to watch in that one. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I have a little bit of a superstition here, too, because Oklahoma State swept OU during the regular season, and that does not happen super often for us to sweep. Uh, it, it, in, I say odds, in case any of y'all didn't know, I'm an Oklahoma State grad for undergrad. Um, for us to sweep OU is rare for most sports. So mm -hmm, yeah. I have them going 3-0 against OU in the same season very hesitantly. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Kansas, West Virginia, I think we're in agreement here that that'll be Kansas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it'll be closer than some people may think, but you mentioned that the crowd uh, will play a factor. I agree. I mean, I mean, the Jayhawks supporters are always come out in droves to Kansas City. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, they'll probably have a heavy home court advantage compared to West Virginia geographically. Um, Iowa State, Baylor. I have Baylor. I we're in agreement there. Yeah, I have Baylor too. I, I think I, I do think Iowa State. The Iowa State fans shouldn't go overlooked with the way they travel to Kansas City. Um, but it, it, they've been a mess down the stretch. Caleb Grill no longer with the team. They're not going to be able to score with Baylor. So I I'm not trying to shoot down your point here. Didn't Iowa State? Did Iowa State beat Baylor in the finale? Yep, they beat <laughs> uh, they beat them by 15. Pretty. It was a weird. It was the so the last Saturday of the season is always a little weird. I won't go off on a tangent here, but there are always some weird results where you can tell that some teams are like, especially teams that are in like the top fifteen, are like, all right, we're ready for the real tournaments to start. Like, get this regular season out of here. So that was an interesting result. They went into Waco and uh, won by fifteen, but I think that just adds to the point that Baylor is going to come back and probably play pretty well in this one. That's kind of what I was thinking, that Scott Drew is going to have the team ready to go. I thought that was a little bit of a fluke. You know, Iowa State was I, I, Iowa State was sliding mm -hmm. down the stretch during the season. And, um, you know, you mentioned Caleb Grill leaving the team. Gabe Kalsher really put it all together in that, uh, in that win over Baylor last weekend. But, um, okay, Kansas State, TCU. Um, I think it'll be a close one, but I, I'm actually leaning TCU here. Yeah, we're in agreement so far. I lean TCU as well. Um, I, it, this is going to be a phenomenal game to watch on the offensive side of the ball. Both teams get up and down the court. Should be played in the 80s. So uh, if you're not a fan of one of these teams, but you do want to watch you know, some fun basketball, this would be one to tune into. I just like the way TCU is trending. I mentioned it at the top, I believe 17-3 and three with Mike Miles Jr. on the court this season. So... Uh, they're really rounding into form right now, and, and I think they pull off the mini upset. Yeah, TCU's playing well. I also think they have the front court advantage over Kansas State, um, which I think will be big in that one. Um, Oklahoma State, Texas, I think we're in agreement here, Texas. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I like what I saw against for Texas against Oklahoma State this year. I think I do think just because it's the Longhorns, they're going to make this one a little closer than it needs to be. But ultimately, I think... Uh, with the experience guard play, they'll be able to pull it out. Yeah, um, but yes, I mean, a lot uh, that, that would be a lot to feel good about in that matchup if you're Texas, because uh, Texas is 2 0 against Oklahoma State this season, average margin victory, I believe, by a dozen points. So um, that would still be a pretty favorable matchup for Longhorns. Kansas Baylor. You know, I, I, I could see this going either way. Um, I'm going to play devil's advocate here and say Baylor. If you have a convincing enough case for me to go Kansas, I. I don't. Um, I don't have a strong lean on this one, honestly. That game, the, their most recent meeting on February 18th, where Baylor jumped all over Kansas in fog, and then the Jayhawks just stormed back and basically outscored the Bears by 30 points in the final 25 or so minutes of the game. That's a bit concerning because we've seen Baylor not really be able to guard against competent offensive teams. That said, they can easily outscore the Jayhawks. So I don't really have a strong lean either way. So if you're, le if you're leaning Baylor, I'm, I'm totally fine with, with you advancing them. I also think Kansas feels like they have some bigger fish to fry and could be, could be looking ahead a little bit. Yeah, for Kansas, for me, the 
Kansas, for me, the bench depth obviously is always going to be a primary concern, but I feel like in a situation like this in the Big 12 tournament where you've got, you know, you, you've got a West Virginia team that's giving you some trouble, then you have a Baylor team that's got a deep backcourt, a lot of scores. I think you're playing with fire, and I think eventually you will get burned. I don't know if it would be this game. I don't know if it would be the one after, but I, I have a I have a hard time seeing Kansas with the way they played at times this season, even during their seven game winning streak. A lot of close games. A lot of close games that they managed to pull out in the end. That went over TCU. I think that was a one point win. It went over Tech by a few points. Beat West Virginia by four. And then obviously got beat by Texas by like 15 or 16. Yeah. Um, I'll go Baylor here, but again, I'm not trying to say that to roast Kansas. I just think that I think the bigger fish to fry looking ahead. You know, Kansas does already pretty much have a one seed locked up. Losing to Baylor in the Big 12 tournament semifinals isn't going to deprive them of their one seed. So Yeah, definitely. And Baylor has more to play for there. I mentioned at the top, Baylor fighting for a two seed. They need a win like that on their resume. Um, TCU, Texas. What could be one of the most interesting games of the Big 12 tournament if this does come to fruition? Definitely. This is one that scares me for sure. Uh, We mentioned it, but, you know, their most recent meeting on uh, the, what was it, Uh, March 1st. So if if they do match up in this one, It'll be almost a little over a week after that meeting. I think it's going to be fresh in the Longhorns' minds. Uh, I think that'll bode well for Texas. But I think TCU in general isn't the best matchup. I think they match up well in the backcourt. And you mentioned the TCU frontcourt, um, who you think can can kind of dominate Kansas State. I think they can also give Texas some troubles. So I, while in, in uh, one of my written pieces. I gave Texas the slight advantage. This is really a coin flip, coin flip game for me. Do you have any strong lean in this one? Um, there's a part of me that wants to play devil's advocate here too, just because like it's March and I mean I expect chaos. I, I there's going to be more this year. You know, I think ultimately for this one, one of the biggest X factors is going to be Tyrese Hunter. You know, Tyrese Hunter obviously really turned it on down the stretch last season with the way he played in March uh, for Iowa State. And I think against TCU this year, he will be the deciding factor, not just because, you know, on the defensive end of the floor, he's often going to be defending Mike Miles. And a locked-in versus a not-locked-in Tyrese Hunter on the defensive end of the floor I'm just talking about from like a focus and tenacity perspective. I'm not even talking about like actual fundamentals, off ball awareness, not even anything like that. I mean, I guess off ball awareness kind of feeds into focus and tenacity, but I think you get what I'm saying here where like if Tyrese Hunter is really locked in on both ends of the floor and has found his scoring groove, um, Texas, I think probably wins this game. Uh, interesting stat last season. Um, Tyrese Hunter has I, I, one of his three lowest game scores in Big 12 play against uh, TCU. Iowa State loses. He then goes off for double-digit points, one of his five highest game scores in Big 12 play. Iowa State beats TCU. Very large bucket stats there. I get that, but it goes to show the effect that a locked-in Tyrese Hunter on both ends of the floor can have for you. Um, and then, I mean, you... You can just see that by the type of run that Iowa State had last March. Um, yeah, by that logic, I mean, I believe, and I predicted this in, in, a, in a piece, that Hunter's going to continue that upward trajectory that he ended the regular season on. I think he's going to play well in both Kansas City and in the NCAA tournament. So if we're doing an A plus B equals C thing right here, I think we're both kind of lean in the horns. Yeah, I think we've talked ourselves into it. Um <laughs> Yeah, I I guess to put it simply, you know, you mentioned that the upward trajectory for him, it's coming through. Um, I tweeted out something the other day that was saying uh, after the Kansas game, he capped the regular season with his first four-game stretch of the season, scoring at least a dozen points. Four consecutive. So something's clicking for him right now. Yeah, Yeah. 
We'll go to Texas, but for any TCU faithful out there, if you are watching this this deep into the video, just know that TCU scares us and it's very close. Um, also, there would be something cool about seeing a TCU Baylor Big 12 tournament final. Um, you know, it's weird to me that Baylor actually doesn't scare me as much in the Big 12 tournament final as they would in like the early rounds. Interesting. I uh, I don't think this is a good matchup for Texas. I think what we saw in Waco a couple weeks ago when Texas got out to the 18-4 to lead uh, and then just really got shellacked the rest of the way, that, that – I. And that was without without Keontae George. I think the Baylor guards are are going to be able to. Like honestly, we we just talked up the Texas guards, and I have a lot of confidence in Marcus Carr, and Tyrese Hunter, and Serge Barry Rice. I'm still taking the Baylor tri uh, trio over the Texas trio. And if Texas fans want to come at me for that one, you can. But I mean, Keontae George is the most gifted scorer of all of them. Adam Flagler has the easiest step back three. Like it's so fluid and it seems like he makes it every single time he puts it up. I just think this isn't a good matchup. Jalen Bridges can stretch you out. Um, he was kind of having a field day with Timmy Allen and obviously Jonathan Chamo Chachua is back in the middle. So they don't have that problem at the five position that they did earlier this season. I personally think that this is not really a great matchup for Texas. And if this did come to fruition in the final, I would give the advantage to Baylor 100%. I don't like what I saw in Waco. Um, and if we're being honest, it was a really good game in Austin. And <clears throat> so when, if, we're looking at, if we're looking at it, the team played, you know, like a 50-50 even coin flip game in Austin. And then they played a game in Waco where – you know, Baylor was a runaway victor. So you, you translate that to a neutral court, seems like advantage Baylor to me. I'd be curious to see if you're leaning Texas, um, why. I'm already filling it in. So you, you make a convincing enough case because you do bring up a good point. I should have mentioned this from the outset that one of the things that caught my eye in the loss to Baylor on the road a couple of weeks ago, or was that last week? Yeah, like last week. Or two, yeah, two weeks at this point. Yeah. Okay. Like 10 days. Yeah. Yeah. Most so, days. one of the last losses of the regular season for Texas. It, it did scare me a little bit that all Baylor had to do was make some slight adjustments. And then once you were able to slow down Dylan Dessou, that Texas was pretty much cooked. Um, yeah. It, when Texas is able to set the tone like that, given how strong they played for most of the season in the second half. When Texas is able to set the tone like that on the road and they still come up short basically by double digits, it's, yeah, it's not a great sign. Um, you know, I say that it doesn't scare me as much in this situation. I always believe that March Madness has a little bit of situational luck involved where it's like, I don't know, maybe if it gets in the players' heads, but like there's so many factors that play into different results in March, unless you're just so overwhelmingly good that you're able to beat, you know, just average tournament caliber teams by double digits that, you know, sometimes things, sometimes flaws are going to catch up to you. When you're heading into March Madness, you have these coaches that have weeks to prepare for some of the different like top seeds in the country. And so, you know, if I'm scaling this down to the Big 12, I mean, you know, Texas and Baylor have been preparing to face each other now a couple different times in the last couple of months. And um, it seems like Scott Drew has the upper hand on Rodney Terry here. That's a great point. Yeah. I, I don't I, I don't like I don't like the chess match in that regard. And yeah, I mean, you said it just from a matchup on paper perspective, it, it favors Baylor. But that's enough for me to choose Baylor as well. Okay. Yeah, that looks good to me. I think I think there definitely can be a silver lining for Texas fans if they get two wins and end up bowing out in the final. Obviously, once you get to the Big 12 tournament final, you want to win it. But I think it, you know, it is almost kind of nice. Like you get a couple wins under under your belt, some solid wins over Oklahoma State and TCU, 
Um, so you're not totally rid of momentum heading into the NCAA tournament. But you also got that little chip on your shoulder because, like you mentioned at the top of the video, only two of the guys on this team have ever won a conference title before. So if they do end up falling one game short, 40 minutes short, I think there's going to be even more hunger to leave it all out there in the NCAA tournament. So I think you could kind of get the best of both worlds would be my positive spin zone to uh, predicting that loss. Yeah, that's true. And it actually, yeah, I mean, that adds two more quad one wins to the resume. I mean, you're looking at it like the other potential one seeds here, UCLA, Houston, Alabama, and Kansas. Houston's got five quad one wins because playing the American. And then, um, you know, Alabama's got nine. UCLA's got seven. So you, you make it a little bit interesting in the conversation compared to like UCLA. Yeah, if I think, yeah, if uh, if we look up and Purdue and UCLA bow out in their first game in their respective conference tournaments, and Texas pushes to Saturday, that could there the, then there could be a lot at stake. Um, yeah, but right now I feel pretty locked into that two line. I also think kind of matters what two you are. You know, if you're the top two or just kind of where you end up playing. Um, Obviously right. not. Yeah, but so so there's definitely a lot at stake. It'll be it'll be interesting. It's true. Right now, for those that are unaware, I Purdue is pretty unanimously the top two seed. Um, I've even seen some bracketology that have UCLA as a two seed, and Purdue is the last one seed. So um, it's pretty interchangeable there. Purdue and UCLA could have some movement depending on how they do in their respective conference tournaments, but. Texas, I showed it at the beginning of the video, or before we did our bracket prediction for Big 12 tournament, that you know, Texas still has a double-digit percentage chance of getting the getting the one seed. Um, I mean, they they're going to have to make it to the Big 12 tournament final, probably win. But you know, if you get two quad one wins, let's say one of them comes by double digits, um, and then you know, if you keep it, even if you keep it close, the team like Kansas or Baylor. You make it an interesting conversation for Texas. You at least give yourself an argument. So that's all at this point for a one seed. That's all you can really ask for. And let's be real here. Knocking on wood before I become a scapegoat to some degree. Um, I mean, in reality, though, the the bottom 15 seed versus the top 16 seed I'm not going to ask a team like Kentucky or Virginia, but it's not a huge difference. It's really not. This is either one is a situation where you need to be winning by at least 15 points. So I feel good either way. Anyway, agreed. Agreed. I agree with that. We're we're here pretty well over 30 minutes on the video. Um, I don't I don't have much else. We you know. I'll say this, we'll come back with another preview video, um, or at least I will, once uh, once we have like a determinant for the quarterfinals. Oklahoma State, though, you play tomorrow night, so um, maybe not maybe, maybe not a full preview video, but we'll have a lot of content up, in the, uh, up at the site for you, if not. So either way, stay, stay locked in there. We'll link all the coverage in the description below, as always. Um, yeah, Shane, you got anything else? Any closing thoughts? No, uh, I think that this is, you know, the most exciting time of the year. So we're coming off the most successful regular season in Texas for Texas basketball in over a decade. Hopefully that can translate to March. Um, I think the good thing about the Big 12 tournament is you can kind of spin it however you want with whatever results happen. Uh, not all is lost if Texas was to somehow bow out in the quarterfinals. Um, so, yeah. Hopefully we have more than, you know, two total games remaining on this schedule, but it's crazy how quick everything sneaks up, and I'm excited to watch this team compete for another couple of weeks. Me too. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always excited for March and, you know, having a Texas team this good heading into the tournament um, gives, you, gives you some hope, some optimism for, uh, for what's to come. Um, but yeah, anyway, I will be linking all of our work at the site up in the description below. Uh, there's a couple of pieces that Shane and I have done in the last few days. 
four predictions and uh, three of the reasons why Texas will win the Big 12 tournament uh, that I would highlight as um, you know, definitely some worthy pieces to read. But anyway, uh, for Andrew Miller, Shane Black at hookemheadlines.com, um, we'll catch you all year throughout the week for the Big 12 tournament. That's pretty much it. Okay. Very good.